graphing inequalities was introduced when we looked at two variable linear inequalities. We showed how by making the statement an equation, we generate a boundary line that forms the border of our solution. A solid line was used if points on the line were to be included because the inequality symbol includes equal to. And a dashed line was used if they were excluded. Testing values on either side of the line would indicate where to shade. Or we recognize that greater than meant above the boundary line, while less than meant our solution lies below the line. Let's extend our understanding of quadratic inequalities to two variable relationships and use this episode to connect some of the pieces. General or standard form describes a second degree trinomial that will generate a parabola when we include y or make it a function. The simplest two variable quadratic equation is y equals x squared. This model parabola is often used as a starting reference for others. Finding points for this equation allows us to see why it forms a parabola shape. We can also graph our quadratic equations by putting them in graphing or vertex form. This quickly gives us our vertex, and we can use our understanding of the coefficient a to find other points. We know h gives us the x vertex coordinate value, and k gives us the y value. In our model quadratic, both h and k are of course zero. So our vertex is the point zero, zero, and a is one. But as k increases, the graph moves, or translates up, by plus two in this equation. And as h increases, the graph translates in a positive direction, plus three in this example and vice versa for negative values of h and k. Here's a quick reminder of how the constant a defines the shape and orientation of the parabola. Again, we'll relate the changes to our model parabola. For example, y equals 4x squared. We know one point is the vertex, 0, 0. And we know our y value increases four times faster than our x. So, from the vertex, the first point right is 1, 4. And left is negative 1, 4. That is enough to sketch our parabola, which is steepened or narrowed. If a is less than 1, like y equals 1 quarter x squared, the parabola flattens. And finally, a negative a inverts the parabola. Now, instead of a minimum vertex point, we get a maximum point. Let's put all of this together and graph some quadratic inequalities. Make our most basic inequality an equation to establish the parabola that forms the boundary line. Now test values to know if the solution lies above or below the line. Try the point 2, 1. This is false as 1 is not greater than 4. And the point 1, 2 is true. And a point on the line, like 1, 1, is also false. So now we can shade above the line and use a dashed line to show that values on the line are not included in the solution. If we reverse the inequality sign, we of course change our solution. y less than or equal to x squared would of course result in a graph that shades below a solid boundary line. Just like we learned with linear inequalities, as long as our inequalities isolate for y to the left of the inequality sign, we can use the direction of the sign to let us know where to shade. Good practice to keep checking though until you're real confident with this. Let's connect back to our work with single variable quadratics to show how roots could be used to help graph and solve quadratic inequalities. Here's an example we looked at that was easy to factor. Excuse that it's not in standard form. By making an equation, we use the factors to establish roots, or zero points, the points on the line that make the equation true. And then we tested intervals to solve our inequality statement as shown here. 
Let's add y to the inequality by recognizing that the point 0, 6 is the y-intercept, we get three points we can use to generate a parabola, like this. A less than means to shade below. And hopefully, not surprising, our solution includes the x values we just identified. Of course, if we reverse the sign, we get the interval between the roots. And when we include y, we get all values above the parabola. One last connection as we wrap up this episode. Recall single variable inequalities that had no roots? The solution was either all values of x or no values of x. A quick look at parabolas that do not intersect the x-axis may clarify why this is true. This inequality, for instance, forms this graph. The graph doesn't cross the x-axis even at its maximum point. So, there are no points on the x-axis that make this inequality true. If we reverse the inequality sign, our graph shows that all points on or above the boundary line are true, including all x values on the x-axis. Now you know why single variable quadratics without roots have only one interval. You should be seeing some of the connectedness of all these concepts as we go deeper into our understanding of inequalities. We will consider some systems of quadratic inequalities next.